What's up, YouTube? I've made it to Colorado, and I don't really have anything exciting for you. Honestly, I'm sitting in a Walmart parking lot um, somewhere in Colorado between where I was, which was Grand Junction, and on the way to Denver. Now, there were some wildfires going on, and so I sort of had to take sort of a more scenic route around, and you could either go, like, loop north or loop south, and I chose the route that looped a bit south. I had a bit of a scary drive last night, <laughs> um, and I had my camera, well, I had my, basically I have a spare cell phone, which is what I'm recording on right now, because I'm about to use my actual phone. Uh, it's my old cell phone phone from a while back and so I just keep that as like a spare camera and I was using my actual phone for navigation and it got all messed up like I even have a little mount here now I used to try to strap it right here but it was a horrible view so I have like a little mount here right now specifically for trying to get road footage when I'm driving and then I have another clip up here which also has like a little mount on it but uh it, it, it failed on me and I was not fiddling with a phone on like a scary road in the dark and that was a problem it was a really windy windy path and it was dark but I was like I don't want to stay when I get it in my head that I need to push more miles I just push more miles <laughs> and so like I'm at a Walmart now um, in I forget Colorado somewhere in Colorado and I'm catching up on YouTube, which is why I have like this laptop in front of me, and I'm just publishing the Nevada videos. And I always like to do that to sort of give you a perspective. In fact, I've edited the first Nevada video, <laughs> and I just shot a video for Patreon, which they'll be getting today, and you are probably seeing this two weeks after I recorded it. Um, point being, I get a lot of questions about mail. You know, how do you get mail on the road? How do you get mail on the road? And I've done videos about it. In fact, I did one video specifically on it while I was in Oregon, um, which I'll try to link, link a card to if I remember. But and if I don't, yell at me in the comments and say, Don, where's that other video on getting mail on the road? But I've never been in the situation where I didn't have an address to send things to. Like, that is a, that's a new situation for me to, like, um... Uh, uh, needing that address because when I went to Oregon um, I was going to be working for Oregon Shakespeare Festival in Ashland so I sent my mail to Ashland so I called my mailbox company I gave them the address to uh, Oregon Shakespeare Festival and then they sent the stuff to Oregon Shakespeare Festival and I picked it up from the mail room at Oregon Shakespeare Festival and that was no problem when I went to RTR in Arizona I wasn't going to be gone that long and I was like you know what I'll just I'll just catch up with my mail when I get back and that's sort of like the thing about private mailbox companies PO boxes and things like that um, is you have to make these decisions and for paper mail there's a lot of options because sometimes you just need to read it you don't need to physically hold the piece of paper and so there's a lot of ways to uh, handle that as well I have just a physical mailbox company in Berkeley um, that I've had since the day I was living in my car. <laughs> um, well, not the day I was living in my car, but since I've been living in my car. I've definitely had it since I lived in, in the minivan. Um, but since the day I was living mobile, I knew that I needed either a P.O. box or a private mailbox company. And I found a small private mailbox company in Berkeley that I've been using for a while now. Um, and when... I'm out of town what I can do is I can leave them a deposit and that deposit they'll use to buy postage and send my mail in a single package to wherever I am since I know I'm gonna be sort of stationed in Denver for a week or a couple of weeks I just need an address in Denver to send it to now obviously I don't want to go and get a, a PO box for a temporary situation I don't want to go get a you know a temporary mailbox in De Denver for a temporary situation. So how do you handle that situation? And that's when general delivery comes in. And so you can send things general delivery, delivery words to almost any post office in the United States. I don't know about other countries or how that works or any of that. I mean, also, like, if you're in small towns, a lot of times you can just ask around and be like, is there a place that accepts mail? And sometimes stores will do it, and I've covered this in other videos, and little places like that. 
Amazon is easy because you can just go on their website and find pickup locations if it's a situation where you're just trying to get something from Amazon. Um, I personally prefer to find a local store, a local chain usually, like a Walmart or Target or whatever, a Lowe's, a Home Depot. If they carry the product that you're looking for, um, that is also really easy. You just have to go on their website and make sure it's either a product they have in store or a product they're willing to ship to store. Um, and honestly, that just adds a little bit of business, I feel, and somebody can correct me if I'm wrong, to the places you're passing through. And that's always the big deal. Like right now I'm staying in the Walmart parking lot. I'm probably going to go in Walmart and fill up my extra water jug. I'm probably going to go into Walmart, you know, and, and buy something. Um, and so it, it's a little bit, it's why they usually don't mind travelers coming through if travelers are spending money at their business. What they don't want is travelers abusing their business, you know, as a free place to stay. Now, I'm not going to say I never did that. There's times I've stayed in business parking lots and got away with it at businesses I didn't patron, but I always made sure it was for one night. I was polite. I didn't leave any trash laying around. And, you know, I made sure it was an overnight situation. Now, on the road, trying to get YouTube edited, more than once I've just hung out in a shopping center all day um, and so far I haven't been kicked out. But again, back of the lot, as far away from everybody as you can get, being as respectful as you can. But I want to get into the point of this video, which is finding out if I can get general delivery at a Den Denver post office. So I'm going to very carefully like move this laptop because it's still processing my video upload for today. Then I'm going to get on the phone and see if I can find out if I can get some general delivery sent to a local post office in Denver. Um, I'm going to want to have some paper and an ink pen. And this is why I love steering wheel desks. I found out this was like literally my most comfortable office. This cab is so much bigger than the minivan that it's way more comfortable. I used to work in the front of the minivan and I would feel like super cramped. I actually feel comfortable. This is a little high, but it's not too high to actually work comfortably, um, which is great. Let's get on the phone. Yeah, I have a question. Um, I'm gonna be uh, traveling, passing through the Denver area, um, and I was hoping to get um, my mail general delivery to the post office, and I wanted to make sure that this was a post office where that was acceptable. So I have to like physically come into the post office in order to receive mail there? temporarily it's literally going to be like a bundle of mail in a package before I move on I haven't set it up yet because I like I've never been in a situation where I've needed my mail forwarded to some place I wasn't landing with an address so I was checking in with the post office first before I had anything sent in that direction Well, well, getting into the details, one, I have, I'm from California. Um, I'm going out to, uh, I'm basically making a drive to the East Coast to close down the storage unit that I have there. I wanted to catch up with my mail that's in Berkeley, which probably isn't a lot, and that would just be forwarded in one envelope. So it's those two things I'm trying to catch basically along the way. And I've read the the general delivery like instructions on the website. I know you have to like put my name, care of like general delivery or something like that, and then the post office's address. And um, you know, I I know other people who travel and have used this option before. I just personally have never done it before, so this is my first time walking through the steps. Yeah, 
one my mail is coming from a private mailbox company so they just package all my mail in an envelope put on whatever address I tell them to put on it you know it's basically like in a large manila envelope um, depending on you know how much mail there is and then they forward it to whatever address I, I tell them to um, and the you know the other company they're just gonna package the package and send it to that address okay Yes. No, people tell you to put that up by it or whatever. Um, I'll allow it to point. Um, so what you gotta do is you gotta type, you know, tell them to the general delivery. Mm-hmm. And then I'll come to your first and last day, and then I'll come out of my general delivery. And then it's gonna be never Colorado State. Okay. I don't need the 951 20th Street? No. It's not a person on delivery. Okay. All right. So that was a lot of, like, <laughs> like shenanigans. Um, it's only because I was trying to get ahead of going there, and so I wanted sort of the mail in progress. Um, and so I was trying to call ahead. Um, you can also just wait till you get there. The thing is, like, if you wait till you're in the actual location, um, one, I've heard of people's generally general delivery mail being rejected, so I always like to know that I talked to the post office so I can say, hey, I called you guys on this date. There was no reason to reject my mail. Like, what's up, guys? Um, so that's the first thing. I just wanted to have that because I've heard of people's general delivery mail being rejected ideally if you're going somewhere where you know someone and it's literally only one or two things or something a single one-off thing I would rather use their address than use the general delivery option I wouldn't want to use that for like a regular mail option like I wouldn't want somebody else's address to be my regular mail option but if it's just a one-off and you're like hey I'm pax passing through Tennessee I need to be able to send a package to Tennessee um, it's not that big of a deal. <laughs> you know, you're in Tennessee, you have an address, I just need a place for this package to land that I have no other options for. That's a great option. Um, but if you, if it's some sort of weird situation where you don't know anybody in a town or an area and you don't really have any other options, like if you're staying at a campsite or a campground, a lot of times they will have options for you. You can always go to visitor centers as well and be like, hey, is there places that, you know, accept mail around here? State visitor centers can sometimes help you with that kind of stuff. Um, asking around town can sometimes help you with that stuff. But if you're just like, hey, I know I'm going to be passing through um, Kansas. <laughs> um, you know, I don't know anybody in Kansas, uh, but I'm, I, I think that's a good spot to sort of connect with my mail. You can use it as a mail forwarding spot and you could call ahead and try to get ahead of that process because the guy on the phone he's like well normally we want people to come in but that guy seemed like he wasn't very happy at his job man uh, <laughs> uh so yeah it'll, 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 sorting this out as i go like i said i've never done general delivery i knew the instructions for general delivery but i personally have never done it and so um I need to get set up for something real quick. Um, it shouldn't affect my export. My export's still going on. I hate using anything while this is exporting because it's going to take forever. It takes so long to export. This isn't even uploading to YouTube. It takes so long to export. It was. Um, I need to call my mailbox in Berkeley and then uh, let them know that they can send my mail general delivery to Denver. And then I'll just pick it up in Denver. Another bad thing about blindly picking up picking a post office is like honestly I have no idea if this was a good choice or a bad choice. This post office might be buried in some area I'm gonna hate driving through. Um, so if you can actually pick a post office for general delivery when you're in the area, you can at least also have the because a post office can be big or it can be a little thing like slipped on the side of a like building depending on what town you are I've been in all kinds of post offices everything from independent buildings to like holes in the wall and so you don't really know when you're not there sort of what the experience of going to that post office is going to be like so if you can pick a post office while you're 
in <laughs> that state area town, it's probably better than blindly picking a post office the way I did. I literally went post office Denver and just picked the first one that came up. Um, so yeah, <laughs> let's, 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 let's get the rest of this work done. Yes, for anybody who says box trucks aren't stealth, this guy over here is clearly living out of this retired USPS truck. I mean, like, it has graffiti all over it. But, you know, he pulled right up in front of the post office and started doing his thing. I just don't want to interrupt him, but there's very clearly a bed, a cooler, a broom. A <laughs> That's his house. So, yeah, this is why you can pull off box trucks in the city. So I actually just got finished talking to the box truck guy. He was kind of like, he was, he was, he was kind of like in a rush, so I didn't get a chance to actually, um, film talking to him. But yeah, like he just, he was, he was actually living on the street and he found out about a delivery job and he actually bought the box truck for the delivery job. <laughs> <laughs> so he got this retired like truck for the delivery job and then the job fell through and so he started living out of the box truck living in the city living his best life not paying rent he's like it was just like an accident that like worked out for him i was just wondering about his story if he wasn't in a rush i would have tried to get him on camera but proof that a box truck is in fact stealth as much as anything is stealth because it's the kind of vehicle that lives in the city now yes he probably has to be very thoughtful about where he parks but there's nothing not stealth about a box truck especially if you get the smaller ones and he can stand up in it which i can't even say about this place <laughs> nothing against my van my van is treating me well um and i got my mail from the post office um so just to, to end the whole, the whole, the whole journey of like calling to set up to get mail and then getting your mail. Now, the one thing is this is in a downtown area. I hate driving through downtown areas. I hated it in a car. I hate it even more in a, in a van of significant size. Like personally me, if I can avoid like downtown uber busy areas, like again, I say this all the time, the city and like remote camping are painted with this huge huge broad stroke that simply is not true i mean it's not true like i was very comfortable further away from like the downtown area where there were nice little local parks and there were scattered shops with significant size like parking lots and and stuff like that but as i started getting into the city like i started to get those hives i get where i'm like okay this is exactly the environment that i that I don't like like it's 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 too intense it's too many people it's too much traffic moving too fast like it's not as bad as San Francisco or like New York but I can definitely feel that like too much feeling where like the pressure starts to build and I'm like like this isn't where I want to be I don't like I don't like this I don't like this I don't like this so this broad stroke we give to city life is like unfair when there's like so many different levels like the little town areas that I really enjoy, sort of like Ashland, like Ashland was adorable. I was completely comfortable in Ashland, Oregon. It was like, oh, excuse me. Um, it was just at that point where it wasn't a lot, like it wasn't too much. It was, it, it was, it was slow. It was easy going. And at the same time, you had walking access to, like, everything you would ever need. Um, when you get into these downtown areas, that's when you start to get into time-restricted streets, which I can already see all of the... Uh the meters um it's when you get people who are really really impatient when you don't know the area like i'm trying to get to this post office i've never been to and it's hot so i'm going to turn the car on so i can get the air going and somebody throws up a middle finger at me um you guys are just gonna have to deal with the noise of the air in the car coming on. <laughs> i need my air um Somebody throws up a middle finger at me because they feel like I'm going too slow, um, which probably I am because like I'm trying to figure out where the heck I'm going, you know. Um, 
so you know it's it's very different to like be sort of in these little small neighborhoody environments versus this like really intense like big city downtown sort of life um and those two things are different and jumping back on the post office thing i um as far as the post office um let me get my thoughts together for what i'm trying to say I would not have picked this post office if I realized how downtown it was. I would have picked something a little more further out, not, you know, so, but so, but that's what came from sort of picking the post office blind before I got here. Um, and so like once I actually was driving into this area and like, I was like, oh my God, this is like a downtown area. Um, that made everything really more, more difficult for me. Um, and I was like, I would not have picked this post office if I had any clue, but it went fine. I walked in, I gave him my ID. As you can see, the mail is marked general delivery. Um, it was sent from my mailbox lo location in Berkeley. And then, um, it was delivered to Don Kelly general delivery in Denver. Um, and that's all it was. It was honestly really silly. See, easy. I called my mailbox place. I gave them the general delivery address. I checked in with the post office to see if they accepted general delivery. I did those in reverse, but you should really do those two things. Um, I, you, they actually do theirs in a priority mail envelope, so I have tracking. But honestly, I never got the tracking number, and I was going to call them back for it. And I was like, you know what? I'm just going to go down to the post office and see if the mail has arrived yet. I go there. I give them my ID. They give me my mail and I move on with life. And that's getting mail on the road.